All right, today is 7-4, applying properties of similar triangles. The objective is I will learn to use properties of similar triangles to find segment lengths along with applying proportionality and angle bisector theorems. Now we've been talking about proportions um, and they can be used to find different lengths of segments determined by parallel lines. Um, so we're going to talk about or introduce this new theorem that kind of continues this idea of proportions and different shapes and triangles and things. Um, and this theorem says that if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and it intersects the other two sides in two distinct, that just means different points, then it separates these sides into segments that we can use proportions on. So I'm going to kind of use this picture here to kind of explain what all these words mean. Um, so I have this triangle here, CBD, the smaller triangle. It's kind of embedded inside this CAE triangle. Right, now, because these two lines right here are parallel, I can use proportions to figure out the different sides. So CB, the ratio of CB over CA is going to be congruent to the ratio of CD over CE. All right, and then we have BA over CA. That's going to be equal to DE over CE. Okay. And then the next set, um, if I have CB over, that's going to be BA, that's going to be equal to CD over DE. And then BA over DE is going to be congruent to CA or equal to CA over CE. Okay, so all I did was, th these, are, these are four different ways that I could split up these sides. All right, and this is going to be very important when we get to start working through some of these problems. Um, especially a problem like this first one. Right. And then I have x1 on this side and 8 over and 2 on the other side. Right, now this parallel line right here kind of sets up the proportion. It's going to be x over 1 is equal to 8 over 2. Right. And then we cross product, do cross multiply, multiplication. So that gives me 2x and then 1 times a is 8. Um, and then divide by 2, x is 2, or excuse me, 4. x is 4. Okay. Next example. Um, let's me do this. Same idea. See, I have the parallel lines here. So this line, if I kind of were to extend it out here, that's going to tell me my proportions. So I could go 4 over 8 plus x is equal to 3 over 5 plus x. All right, and then I want to do my cross products. 4 plus 5 plus x, or 4 times 5 plus x, is equal to 3 times 8 plus x. Okay, and I did this to remember to distribute. That's going to be 20 plus 4x is equal to 24 plus 3x. All right, if I move things over, I'm going to subtract the 3x, so it gives me x on the left. Then I want to move this plus 20 or positive 20, so I have to subtract 20. 24 minus 20 is going to give me 4. So now x is 4. All right, and likewise, proportional parts of a triangle can be used to prove the converse. So we're going to kind of go backwards. Um, if I have two lines that intersect two sides, if a line intersects two sides of a triangle and separates the sides into corresponding segments, and they happen to be proportional, then the line is parallel to the third side. So my conclusion is, or I'm going to try to prove or make a conclusion that these two lines are parallel. And the way that's going to happen is if I can create a proportion using the different dimensions. So EG, so from here all the way down, that's 15. Right, EH is... 5, LG is 12, and FL is 6. All right, so we're going to kind of use proportions to see if this, if these two lines right here are parallel. Okay, well, if this is 15, the whole thing, and I know this much of it from here to here is 5, that means this part, HG, segment HG, has to be 15 minus 5, so that's 10. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use to set up my proportions. I'm going to go 5 over 10, and I want to see, is that equal to 6 over 12? 
All right, so cross products, 5 times 12 is 60. 10 times 6 is also 60. They are equal. So then I would say yes, HL is parallel to EF, segment EF. All right, number four, I'm going to let you try that one so you can check with me, make sure you're understanding um, these two theorems. And ask me when you get into class, and we'll go over them if you need me to. This next theorem, a segment whose endpoints are the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, is parallel to the third side of the triangle, and its length is half the length of the third side. Okay, so and I'm going to use this example five here to kind of explain what this theorem means. All right, so um, looking at this triangle down here, you notice that these two are congruent, the 4y plus 6 and the 2y plus 18. Because of these little tick marks, um, I know they're congruent. And if I look at the other side of the triangle, these set of tick marks also match. So that tells me that this is a midpoint and this is a midpoint. So what that means or what this theorem states is that this 4x minus 5 is going to be half of the x plus 1. So two of, in other words, 2 of these 4x minus 5s is going to equal 1 of these x plus 1s. So to solve for x, x plus 1, 11, excuse me, is going to be equal to 2 of the 4x minus 5s. Okay, so we'd have to distribute x plus 11 is going to be equal to 8x minus 10. All right, if I subtract here, that's going to give me um, 6x. Okay, and then if I move this minus 10 over here, that's going to give me, actually, this, I'm sorry, this should be 7x. If I add 10 to both sides, it's going to give me 21. Divide by 7x is 3. Okay. So again, this is kind of a, like a median or mid-segment, so it's equal to half of the x plus 1. All right, for the y values, kind of these tick marks tell me that my equation is going to need to be 4 plus 6 is equal to 2y plus 18. All right, so this gives me 2y on this side. I would subtract 6 here to get 12, and then divide by 2 gives me y is 6. All right, um, this next theorem is similar to the one we did at the beginning. If three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they cut off the transversals proportionally. So this kind of middle, or this in-between line right here, it cuts this proportionally. So that means PQ over QR. So this piece over this piece is going to be proportional to DE over EF. Okay, we could also set it up as PQ over DE is equal to QR over EF. Okay. It's like me turning the picture sideways and setting up the proportions going this way. Okay. Um, let's see what this looks like. So here's an example. Um, this theorem lets me set this up as 5 over 7 is equal to x over 9. So 5 times 9 is 45 is equal to 7x. Divide by 7 is going to give me 45 over 7. Now put it in the calculator, that's going to give me a decimal um, that doesn't stop. So I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. And I will do number seven with you. Actually, I think I'm going to do just x, and I'll let you solve for y. Um, so let's do this as a proportion. x over 3 is equal to x plus 3 over 4. So that gives me 4x is equal to 3x plus 9. Subtract the x, is getting, or 3x is going to give me x on the left and 9 on the right. So x is 9. And I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out what x is, or excuse me, what y is. Okay, if you want to check, you can ask me, and I will tell you in class. All right, this last theorem that we're going to talk about today um, says that if three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments of one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. 
So again, I'm going to kind of use an example to, to illustrate this theorem. If you notice, i got parallel lines coming all the way through these two lines right here. But notice these tick marks. So these lines, these parallel lines, are cutting this transversal into congruent pieces. Okay. Well, if it does it on this side, then it's going to, these side, these pieces over here are going to be congruent to themselves. So this piece would be equal to this piece and this piece. They'd be congruent. So if I want to solve for x, I simply just let x plus 1 be equal to 2x minus 5 and solve for x. So if I subtract x here and then I add 5, it gives me 6 and we're done. Okay. So if I notice that these parallel lines are cutting the transverse on the congruent sections, it's going to cut it into congruent sections on the other side as well. Alright, and it looks like I'm left out one, so we need to actually talk about what's called the um, triangle angle bisector theorem. Alright, and all it says it is if I have a triangle, and we'll call it triangle A, B, C, All right, and I come up with, uh, with a, an angle bisector, so if I know that this this segment AD bisects this angle, so that angle DAC is going to be congruent to angle BAD. So if these two angles are equal, it creates another proportion um, that I can use. I can set up BD over DC. That ratio is equal to AB over AC. So let me kind of set up some numbers in here for you. If I know that this is, say, 14 and this is 10, and I have this as 2x plus 1 and x plus 2, okay, I'm going to use this kind of proportion to solve this problem. Right. So I would say that 14, actually let's go 2x plus 1, over x plus 2 is equal to 14 over 10. And then I would use cross products, so this would give me 20x plus 10 is equal to 14x plus 28. If I subtract the 14x, it gives me 6x. 28 minus 10 would give me 18. Divide by 6 tells me that x is 3. Okay, so that's how you would use this triangle angle bisector theorem. Again, that depends on whether or not this, si this segment right here bisects the angles.